have a good show. I know you can do it. Also, too, watch Steve's on drug show, Steve Malone, on Fridays on Wimp. I'm promoting his shit because he's a legend. <laughs> and Herb, where are the parties at? The Halloween parties. You got my number. You got my do 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 do. Call at me. Let me know where some parties at. One. Welcome, WEMF listeners, to another fine episode of Steve Me Alone on WEMF Radio. (coughs) So how's it going today, Herb? Not bad, man. How's everything been over here at the radio station? The radio station has been sailing smooth and, uh... I got no complaints. Excellent. All the shows still going on here. Computer didn't break down. No fires or anything. No fires. No, uh, no, no fights attacks. No fights. No witches. No witches. No real lit witches. Sounds like a, a good day. It, some of the best. Sweet. So, oh, were you going to say something? I was going to ask, how, how are you doing, man? I'm doing pretty well. I've just been, uh... I don't, unfortunately, I don't have a quote to open the uh, show with today. Ooh. Yeah. Well, we had, Ty- they had the, the great Tyrone Jones there. That's true. We did have a Tyrone Jones quote. I haven't been reading too much this week because I've been working a lot. I've been, been very busy uh, doing, doing my work uh, for pay. Next week, though. More reading next week. Nice. It's good to read. But, uh, yeah, I figured... Um, kind of covered the second episode well the first real episode of future cop last week so i thought maybe we could rewind and go back to the um the pilot of future cop <laughs> which is a little bit different from the the first real episode of future cop because i think they they changed out some of the actors and i swear they took the guy who plays like the eastern european scientist and turned him into the police chief in the second episode I don't know. That that'll be a question for those uh, those true future cop fans out there. <laughs> if anybody out there knows if I'm right about that or if I just imagined that, uh, and you are a true future cop fan, you can go ahead and give WEMF Radio a call, and you can let us know what you think about Future Cop and whether they switched out those actors or not. The number here at WMF Radio is 617-903-7464. Please call in and give us your thoughts about Future Cop and the actors and the bushy mustache of the guy from the second episode. <laughs> but actually, you know what? Last last week, uh, we were, uh, you know, John Amos is in Future Cop. And uh, you were asking, like, well, who's John Amos? Herb, have you ever seen Coming to America with Eddie Murphy? I have. Okay. Do you Long remember? Do you remember Mr. Mc? You know how he like works at a restaurant, and uh, this woman, his love interest, dad, owns a, a place called McDowell's, which is like a ripoff of McDonald's. Yep. So John Amos is the guy who plays Mr. McDowell, and uh, I have here a quick clip from Coming to America, just to, to jog everybody's memory, uh, in case you. Or maybe you've never seen Coming to America, and this is your chance to get an idea of what it was all about. Uh, it did star Eddie Murphy as some kind of African prince who uh, comes to the U.S. for some reason and has to live like a pauper. And he uh, gets a job mopping the floor at a restaurant called McDowell's, which is not to be confused with McDonald's. So let's, let's listen to the clip. One second. One second. A little bit of technical difficulties, everybody. Don't don't mind this. Don't worry. We'll we'll get it figured out. Dead air. Coming to America. Mr. McDowell! What is it? Sir! 
I was wondering, did you happen to catch the professional football contest on television last night? No, I didn't. Oh, it was most exhilarating. The Giants of New York took on the Packers of Green Bay. And in the end, the Giants triumphed by kicking an oblong ball made of pigskin to a big H. It was a most ripping victory. Son, I'm just going to tell you this one time. Yes, sir. You want to keep working here. Stay off the drugs. <laughs> yes, sir. So that is John Amos, for anybody who is not familiar. But let's get back to Future Cop. Let's see about this. Wait, was John Amos in Future Cop? Well, John Amos is the, um, yeah, he's the second cop. In the second, he's, he's the guy oh, who keeps the asking that, the android, like, yeah. why can you read so well in the, <laughs> in the dark? <laughs> he doesn't even dig chicks. Keep saying things like that. But wire, he's suspicious. Wire, wire, wire. He's getting away. Hey, can you get us a chopper? So the very beginning of the pilot episode of Future Cop begins with Ernest Borgnine in some kind of chase, right? And this is before the android is even introduced. And, uh... John Amos is in the car with him. John Amos a little bit worried about driving this fast because he wants to live. <laughs> Seven years old. Who, John Amos? Yeah. Wow. Interesting, but a lot younger than Ernest Borgnine, who uh, died a few years ago and was in his nineties. Oh wow. Come on, Ernest Borgnine, who's like in his 50s here, I think, trying to run. He's like trying to run after the car that they're chasing. He's not even cha he's not even chasing a guy who is on foot. <laughs> he's trying to run after a car to chase it and catch the car. There's is he catching? No. There in the streets and we are losing. <laughs> he, 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 he gets out of breath and then it goes to a different scene. Functioning with the tools of trench what warfare kind of robot is in the this? atomic age. What part of the game is that? We're suggesting and then he sort of like waves way. and points toward the uh... <laughs> There's just a great freeze frame on him. It says starring Ernest Borgnine as... Cleaver. His name's Cleaver. theme music, but I think they changed it completely in the second episode. It's like they made this first one and then they switched some things around. Uh, this must be a pilot. Yeah, this is the pilot. Now I'm going to go ahead and fast forward a little bit. One on one. That's where it's at. Watch. Now... This lady got replaced, too. This is like the lady in the science lab that made the, uh, the I'm android. I'm sure this will satisfy you, Commissioner. And they're Let showing... Let me demonstrate the possibilities of Haven in a typical one-on-one -on -one street situation. They're showing the cops what this android can do with these, like, videos. And this scene is actually really kind of interesting for the 70s. Because what's going on right now in this scene is there's, like, a black or maybe Latino guy uh, who is in a convenience store. And there's a guy behind the counter, and an old lady walks in. Yes, ma'am. All of you freeze! The old lady has a gun. <laughs> old white lady. One wrong breath and I blow you away. Oh, shit. Now very slowly open the cash drawer and empty it! He's going for the cash. Oh, he's got a gun in there. <laughs> now he shot at the old lady. He's kind of like, like slowly moving behind. Now, now she's shooting at him. He's shooting back. The guy behind the counter. The black dude's just off to the side trying to avoid this right now. She shot the guy dead behind the counter. Oh, no. Cops are showing up. Black guy's 
Well, she's just robbing up with his head out. Happening there? Yeah. She just threw the gun into the black guy's hands. And now he has the gun. Now Haven walks in, the robot. See you. I've never been so frightened in my whole life. And now she's just pretending that she's oh, a scared old lady. Get away from me, man. I didn't do nothing. Just, just get away from me, man. What a frame up. Yeah. <laughs> Ma'am, you're under arrest for attempted robbery and assault with a deadly weapon. How does he you know? You have the right to remain silent. If you give up the right to remain silent... Oh, wow. Questions? If there are none, then I suggest those of you who can adjourn with me to the lab for a summary. I forget if they ever explained how he knows that it was uh, the old lady. Because he's a robot, dude. Robots can, like, <laughs> tell stuff like this, dude. They're, like, masters at, like, uh, deception. Wait, wait. There's no way They're going to talk about it, I think. No, not rigged. Overstated for effect, perhaps. If a paraffin test had been made on the lady's hands, it would have proven if she had fired the gun. Your lab men would have taken 24 hours to achieve this. Haven sensors accomplished it in something ah, under three his sensors. Mm. So we take a little longer, so what? Tell me something, Commissioner. Given all the time you want, would you have held the old lady? Ah, they got the Commissioner thinking. Let's see what other Ernest Borg they have in here. Get in. Okay, so this I think was in when you Ernest, drive, fumble butt. Ernest Borgnine is first and introduced to the android. He doesn't slowly, know he's an android yet. Very slowly. Doesn't trust him because he's a rookie. Rest. Of course. Wait, so are, are there like more rampant androids running around, or is he like the first of his kind? I think he's the first of his kind. Oh, okay. So far as we know. Now you want to know about Cleaver, huh? Well, I tell you, I've been working with him for 23 years. Now you can't get him to jump for a drunken disorderly or a husband and wife squabble. But he's got three beyond the call of duty commendations and a medal of valor. Keeps him in a cigar box in his rooming house. Bottom line is, he's the best cop I've ever known. I wouldn't work with anyone else. But where's it written that I have to like him? Just so they didn't have to, like, demonstrate who Ernest Borgnine's character was. They just have Johnny Amos tell you. Man, I'm hungry. <laughs> Aren't we required to put in three hours before a meal period? Stuff that noise. The robot Take is very by the books. Over there by that restaurant. <laughs> so eventually, uh, they have to chase down somebody who's like stealing the Porsche or something. And they're in a junkyard. There's a weird scene where the robot kind of relates to this trash compactor. Or no, he relates to, like, there's a car getting crushed in the trash compactor here. Do they do that to all machines? Ah. Well, how would I know? <laughs> <laughs> Ernest Borgnine doesn't get it because he doesn't know that he's an android. They wouldn't do that to you. Would they? Would they? Would they? It's a little weird because the android seems kind of angry. <laughs> he just hit the, the emergency stop button. Would they? But I guess maybe they're just sort of implying that he's like... That he's gaining human emotion. Get down. Even though they didn't expect him to. Get down! Oh, this is, I think. Get up, I gotta say, you. Get ahead. I think Haven the Android got shot. No, he understands. He what does. does he understand? I think that he's a robot. I think you're better. <laughs>
So the robot is inside of some kind of garage or something. One of the guys, one of the car thieves, just hit him, knocked him over. He knocked over. Meanwhile, yeah. Meanwhile, Ernest Borgnine just managed to handcuff a couple of the other guys to a car outside. Sees the android knocked over, and his front panel is open with like red and blue glowing lights and a bunch of transistors or something. He said, "Oh sweet Jesus!" Oh sweet Jesus! And now uh, some kind of ambulance from the company Synthetronics just showed up with the doctor lady and the other guy. Who I thought was the, is the police chief in the ensuing episodes. I'm confused. Right, Maybe hold he gets a promotion. But it seems like this company is like an independent <laughs> company <laughs> that's trying to sell the robot to we the police. It. What? May I explain? Yeah, I think you better. Haven, can you hear me now? It says on the screen, yes, you did thank very you. Very well. <laughs> I'm very proud of you. He understands. Oh, nobody really understands you, only me. No, he understands. He does. 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 It's not just a car you could throw in a. It is therefore vital crusher. for our test yeah. purposes. The existence of this prototype remain a secret. Prototype? Haven is still an experimental model. Like a special model that a car company designs without ever intending to put on the streets. Ernest Borgnine still trying to figure out what, what this means. That police academy must be going nuts. Yeah, well, if he's so special, how come he's such a fumble butt? <laughs> a fumble butt. A fumble butt. An eight ball. You know, like when he goes to shoot, he can't hit the side of a barn. <laughs> His gun was loaded with blanks. What? If you wanted, Haven could have been designed to be incapable of missing. Wait, so he knows he's a robot. He, he's figuring it out now because he saw the open At panel with range. the transistors and stuff. But I thought this was the first episode. It is, yeah. He figures it out. Part, this is like, he was like half an hour into the first tracks. episode. Exactly. It's like having a mobile computer with you at all times. Uh, you can stop. You can forget that computer bit. Think of it this way. For a police officer like yourself, he is the perfect adjunct, the perfect partner. Steadfast, loyal, trustworthy. Oh, it would mean so much to him. Help him. Teach him all the things that we can't. What was it? Thund uh, bubble butt? Fum fumble butt. Fumble butt. Fumble butt? Are you going to look that up uh, on Urban Dictionary? <laughs> Really be okay. I know what it means. It's an eight ball. Come on. Yeah, it's kind of like an eight ball. <laughs> I, I actually think I will you, see I mean, if Fumble uh, Butt is on Urban you know, like of his. Com. Sometimes it's easier when another cop breaks the news. You know what I mean? If it isn't, actually, he has no then maybe we should add it. Oh, there was a data computer that he became quite close it to. It is. Here it is. Fumble Butt. A person who is overcome by shyness around a potential mate that a causes that computer. person to fumble and make an idiot... Of his or herself often. He's just a machine. Ah. So oh, maybe the I'm definition of fumble butt has evolved hey, since this He's show. But that's the only Bring definition on Urban Dictionary. Maybe it has one thumbs you. down oh, and zero God. thumbs up. Philistine. Give it a thumbs up. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know if it's quite accurate for this <laughs> show. I mean, I'm not sure. It could be that in later episodes there will be that's scenes of Haven the Android trying to talk to a woman and dropping things or something. But that actually wouldn't, that, that seems unlikely to me, because, like, as John Amos pointed out in the second episode, he doesn't even dig chicks, so. I don't know. Only time will tell. <laughs> How many seasons did this se the series get? I think just one. I think it's just, like, the pilot and, like, six episodes or something. Oh, what a shame. Yeah. Wouldn't that be interesting if, uh, if this was a big hit? <laughs> Let's bring it back. This was still running today. It's like the longest running for television show. Yeah, maybe it needs to be rebooted. It doesn't seem illogical. <laughs> but he wants it to be on professional football. 
professional football. Yeah, like this guy has like an accent here, but I think in the the episodes after this, he does not have that accent. Well, and I think he's a different character. Russian accent is easy to lose if you do not clever. speak it every day, oh, you know? <laughs> well, I use this accent this only when I am dealing yeah, with the robot. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, yeah, it wasn't anything. Don't be so modest. What we is this fumble line. butt? Hell the line. <laughs> it's <laughs> ball. <laughs> what do you mean, Gleaver? Working undercover, so to speak. An unknown soldier. You are confusing me war. and therefore making me angry. <laughs> yeah, I, ah, so. I, I, kinda, I lost the <laughs> accent I mean, there. I went more Middle East. Yeah, maybe that's just what happened to him, though, in the show. Is he, um, oh, Haven. Yeah. Couldn't maybe function he under real state conditions. Well, you know, he he wasn't so terrible. I mean, I've seen a lot of rookies that uh, blew it a lot worse than on their first time out. Ah, you're a good man, baby. The best. You and Bundy? Back on the course. You're playing this music, right? Well, they, 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 the robot didn't just turn into a... <laughs> they didn't just walk into a rave. Did they? Yeah, I'm playing this music. <laughs> That'd be cool if they uh, had this kind of music. In Feature Cop, way back when. That would be very entertaining. So, Herb, I was thinking we could play a game. Okay. Uh, so, I brought this uh, uh, this book from uh, Burning Man that I went to this year. Okay. Right. And for anybody who doesn't know, Burning Man is a, is a very difficult thing to describe, but it's a big art and music festival in the Nevada desert every year, where seventy thousand people come together and form a temporary city that lasts for about a week, and a bunch of crazy shit happens. And then they burn a guy at the end. And at the end, they burn a big guy that they built. And, uh, oh, they did build them? Okay. Yeah, there was a... Uh, <laughs> Is that like the this, Wicker Man? Uh, well, wait, how does the Wicker Man work? Is the Wicker Man, like, just forms forms out of Wicker, supernaturally, or...? No, they, like, take a, uh, a Nicolas Cage and they sacrifice him. Oh, okay. Don't they? I don't know, I've never seen the Wicker Man. I haven't either, I just know it through Nerd Osmosis. But yeah, continue. I see. I, I, I just always figured that the movie Wicker Man was about, like, a, you know, like a big Wicker man that was supernatural or something but but anyway as i was saying uh yeah i think the man this year at burning man i think they pulled it up with human power for the first time in uh 20 years or something like that human uh, power but yeah because they had like 300 people on a giant rope oh. uh pulling it up using a pulley system apparently but anyway, awesome. I have this booklet, and I, I didn't really use this book. This booklet has a whole bunch of events that happened at Burning Man this year. I didn't really use it while I was there. I just wandered around, you know? I just wandered from place to place. I looked at it a little bit. But I was thinking we play a game where I give you the name of the event, and you try to guess what it is. All and right. I'll read what it really is. Awesome. Are you, are you ready? Ready. All right. I got to find something here. I got to find something with a name that isn't, like, too too obvious. <laughs> Okay, so you can give me just like a one sentence or a short description of what you think it is, and I'll just uh, I'll just start start reading this. Uh, the first one is called Dawn of the Planet. This was at Monday at 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. Dawn of the Planet, Monday from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. Right? That's right. So at, at Nacho Camp. At at the Nacho Camp. Yep. All right. So a group of people all sit around in a circle. And they talk about Planet of the Apes and the first time they ever saw it. So, the definition from the book is, Our opening ceremony of dance, fire, and drums will commemorate the birth of humans and begin our first evening of luchador wrestling. <laughs> oh, wow. Both versions fairly interesting. See, I had no idea there was luchador wrestling going out of Burning Man. God damn it, it's too big. Ah, oh, so cool. It's too big. I would have gone to luchador wrestling. Right? I mean, I would have gone to the Planet of the Apes thing, too. That sounds pretty good as well. <laughs> All right, so, um, oh... Okay. No points. Zero for one. All right. Um, this one seems like it should be a little easier. Dylan sing along. All right. This has to be a Bob Dylan sing along. Like everybody gets together to sing Bob Dylan songs. It says here eleven songs of humor, disdain, love, politics, humor, and darkness. Humor twice. Don't worry if you lose track of his groove. There are lyric sheets. So like that doesn't even quite like, you know like it, who's it's, who's screwed? It's not very specific. You you might have you, I feel like you were about correct on that one. Yeah right. right? Yeah. Yeah. Prob- it, probably Bob Dylan. Although I. Oh yeah. So is it another like Dylan band? I mean, unless it was some kind of joke or some kind of trick where there's just like some guy named <laughs> Dylan and he's got some yeah. shitty songs. He wants you to <laughs> sing would, with him or something. That would and be some awesome. Some stuff is sometimes, but 
Uh, okay, here's another one. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, Freaky Tiki from 2 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. on Monday. It's a camp called Back to Camp. All right. Freaky Tiki, dude. These guys... All right, so these guys, right, they, um, they all dress up in Hawaiian clothing and eat pineapples and talk about that movie Freaky Friday. All right, so the definition in the book is Aloha from the Islands. Throw on your best Hawaiian shirt no and come way, to our dude. tropical oasis to party down. Bring the chill party vibe. So that was pretty accurate, too. Now, there's nothing in here about the movie Freaky, Freaky Friday, but it doesn't say they're not going to watch Freaky I mean, Friday either. Somebody there talked about Freaky Friday, dude. Somebody probably showed up and mentioned it or made a joke about it. It wasn't very good. Or maybe a good joke, you know? Maybe right. they, yeah. Yeah. Um, nice. Good. I, I think that counts, though. Yeah, I think that's two for three. Not bad. Okay. Let's, uh... Give me a hard uh, one. Give me a hard one. Another random one. I'm gonna just keep moving through, try to find something <laughs> a little like, a little uh, like oddly titled. Okay, this is an event called Yo Yo with McBride. At, oh wow! And uh, uh, a camp called Planned Playa Hood. <laughs> That's a great camp name. The playa being what the the desert out there is called. Yo Yo with McBride. All right, McBride is totally a, a yo-yo champion, world-renowned yo-yo champion, right? Like yo-yo the, the toy or whatever? Maybe. And he gives lessons. What time? What time of the day does it take place at, though? This is from 3 to 5 p.m. on Wednesday. Yeah, that is totally a yo-yo instruction class. It says here, learn advanced yo-yo techniques <laughs> from a genuine yo-yo master. Not bad. Three for four. Woo! This is going well for you, Herb. Okay. Uh, Naming events is like a is like a weird gift I got, I guess. Yeah. Um, okay, another one called also at three to five on Wednesday at a uh, camp called Corn Stars. Worst iPod ever. Oh man! All right. People gather around. Oh man! Is there gonna be a? a uh, I don't know. They 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 gather around. And they they play songs off, off their no. They they they, they physically play, play uh, playlists their songs and sets, and pretend they're iPods. I don't know. I, I, that one got me off. Yeah. Now this one says, "Join us and share your favorite bad songs as you enjoy some of ours. You will need a drink." Uh, that's really cool, actually. I wouldn't mind going to that. Yeah, it sounds like it's kind of fun. Like, are they playing the songs though? I don't know. It doesn't go into much more detail than that, but I guess oh, uh, I guess if you have a music player, you bring you bring your worst songs, and you go over there, and they probably have some speakers, and they play them. I like that they tell you they in advance, like, you're going to need a drink. <laughs> I like that. All right, let me see what else I can find. Uh, okay, I'm just going to browse through here and see uh, what, what has a good name. Uh... Uh, okay, Roller Derby Bout. This is Thursday, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Black Rock Roller Disco. Oh, you just gave me the, the, the answer right there. Roller Disco? Well, that's the name of the camp. And what's the name of the event again? Uh, roller Derby Bout. <laughs> oh, man, dude. That's like a, that's an extreme fighting roller. Uh, uh, like, you know, like, uh, what's that thing called when people like skate around and like, fight each other? Uh, roller derby, I guess. Yeah, so it's like one of those things. Roller derby. All right. It says here, come watch BRC Roller Derby battle it out on the flat track. Hell yeah. You don't want to miss this roller derby with a BRC twist. Hell yeah, dude. What's Not BRC? Bad. Oh, uh, Black Rock City, which is the name of the temporary city that forms there. Oh. Uh, because it forms in the Black Rock Desert, which is mostly just alkaline, very flat alkaline dust. But there are a few... Uh, Small black rocks that you find amongst the dust. Uh, oh. All right. Uh, okay, we're just gonna look through here. Uh, I want to go to Burning Man next year, man. Let's make it happen. Okay. All right. Uh, this one is called Galactic Yoga. 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. at Battlestar Erotica. Is that the camp, Battlestar Erotica? Yep, that's what it's called. That is a cool camp. This is an orgy tent. This is an orgy, full-blown orgy, 
and they pretend like they're doing yoga. That's how they get warm. Well, here it says, midweek refresh. Come dust off your mind, body, and spirit with a grounding power flow. All levels welcome. That one's pretty vague, uh, vague yeah. too, though. I mean, it's probably just yoga, but I don't know what the galacti- galactic part is all about. What time? What time of the day is that? Uh, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Oh, nice. It's early, dude. Yeah, that, that's cool, you know? Early yoga class in the desert. Did it get really hot out there? Oh, oh yeah, it got incredibly hot this year. Mm. I, I heard it was like 107. Ouch. Day. Yeah. Kind of rough. 11 a.m. yoga class in the hot sun. Yeah, I wonder how many people actually showed up for that. I don't know. They might. Maybe they have good, uh, good shade there. Depends with what is built at that particular camp, I guess. Mm. Ah, right, here's a fun one: fishing for cats. This happens at a camp called Prometheatrix. Tuesday, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. All right, people dress up as cats, and you try to fish them by using compliments. And fishing by fishing, I mean like pick them up. Okay, I feel like yours was pretty close, but this is another vague one. It says, calling all cats slash furry friends. Have you ever wanted a fishy friend, but were too scared you may eat him? (laughs) Worry no longer, come catch a fish. I don't know what the hell that means. (laughs) What does that mean? Is that a thing with furries? Like, what is that? I don't know. uh, I cannot explain that. Why didn't you go to this event? This sounds like the perfect event. What time of the day is that one on? This was uh, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Tuesday. Oh, wow. That's like weird in a day, huh? Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I don't know. That one's another mystery. (laughs) Uh, Okay. Here's one called Won't You Be My Neighbor, Mr. Rogers Social. Oh, my God. That has to be like a a Mr. Rogers uh, uh, sing-along or dress-up, and they talk about Mr. Rogers. Not bad. This is come on over for a morning beverage. Wear your best loved cardigan and meet your neighbors. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, what? A uh, morning carrigan? What was it? It says a uh, morning beverage. Beverage. Yeah. What's so. a carrigan? That's like a the, oh, a, card- a cardigan. Yeah, cardigan? it's like the kind of sweater that Mr. Rogers wore. Yeah. What time of the day? So you go over there, you have a booze, and like you. I have, it says a morning people? beverage, but it might be. I don't know. Some That's pretty cool. People drink at ten in the morning at Burning Man. Wow. Okay, let's see. Uh... I like it. Come on over to the Mr. Rogers early morning meet your neighbors event here at Burning Man. Hey, everybody's heard over here at Burning Man Radio. Sorry. You never know. Maybe next year. Is anybody from Burning Man Radio listening to WMF Radio right now? Let us have a show there. Come yes. on. Steve Me Alone needs to broadcast from Burning Man. Bring Steve and Herb to the Burning Man Radio station and broadcast there. Woo! All right, All here's day. another one. Nice. Uh, wait, I lost it now. This one is called Dialogue Free Cities. It is at a camp called Decentral in Anna Hasana Village. He said dialogue free? Dialogue. Apostrophe. Or dialogue, colon, free cities. Oh, okay. So this is like... This is like an event where uh, you just go to talk about stuff. Talking is encouraged. I thought it was dialogue free for a second. Like, you know, like they don't... they Like the opposite. Like they go there and they, they just hang out, but they're not allowed to talk. It's not like a talking free event. Yeah. Yeah. No, it seems like... Uh, yeah, I don't... This is also kind of vague. Yeah. It sounds like it's maybe like something where somebody talks to you about... Well, it says this. Dialogues and decentralization. How Greenfield City projects can improve governance and alleviate poverty. I don't know what the hell that is. I don't know what a Greenfield City project is, but... That wow. Sounds, yeah, that's, that, that sounds, sounds kind of deep. Positive, or I guess. Wait. Yeah. I don't know. Greenfield? Greenfield City projects. I'm not sure what that means. But uh, if they're alleviating poverty, then I say good for them. Yeah. I'm down with that. Uh, Here's an event called Want to Walk Across the USA. It is from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. on Wednesday at Pink Lightning. Oh, man, dude. So these guys met here, right? And all those people that really want to walk across uh, the USA met here, dude. And at the final day of, uh, of Burning Man... 
They started their walk and they're still walking, dude. They probably made it all the way to the East Coast by now. Okay, it says here, I did, and you can too. Sharing my thoughts, ask me anything, and learn the ins and outs of the long walk. Snacks. So pretty close. Uh, I feel like yours would have been a little more interesting again if you had two people who uh, were doing that. Um, Okay, let's see. The Divine Masculine and Feminine Healing Circle at Red Lightning, 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Wednesday. Sounds kind of corny. I don't know. What do you think? Um, They make people sit back. They they, they take uh, different sexes and have them sit back to back. And talk to each other in a training exercise in order to like further understand the, the the likeness and differences between men and women. You know, you were surprisingly close. This one says HEAL in all caps letters. The rift between the masculine and feminine. Men create the outer ring, witnessing. Women are inside, receiving. Love transforms all. So yours was all in right. like a slightly different arrangement, but same idea pretty much. Oh, that's pretty cool. Nice. All right, let me see if I can find one more of these, and then maybe we can move on to a Randy Quaid clip. Randy Quaid! We are ending a little bit early tonight. Uh, okay, let's see here. Here's a weird one. Tickling and sensual touch. Ooh. Sensual to sadistic. Whoa, 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 whoa. Read that again? Tickling and sensual touch. Sensual to sadistic. All right. At Silicon Village from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday. This is a massage place, dude. You go there to get massaged and they will play nice or they will play rough. It's all up to you. So it says here, learn about sensual touch and tickling from playful to mean. Please bring something to do it on and a partner. Demos and hands-on learning. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is more educational. I thought it was more like pleasure. So it's probably like an educational thing, but it has, you know, some kind of combination of like tickling and people spanking each other or something like that. <laughs> cool. Oh, Burning Man. Burning Man. What Next strange. year, 2018, dude. 2018. The year that Herb goes to Burning Man. With your help, Burning Man Radio <laughs> Camp people, if you're out there listening. Steve Me Alone needs to be part of Burning Man Radio. Let us let us let us be the voice of your airwaves. Call us. The time has come. That's right. Burning Man needs us. <laughs> Alright. Let's check in again with Randy Quaid. What's Randy Quaid up to? Let's see what he's doing. Let's see what Randy Quaid's talking about. Not fine. Based upon the documents in front of it today, that probable cause this is Randy for the court. failure to appear charge for November 16, 2010, the court is dismissing the order for interstate rendition of fugitive for both of you. This is a judge releasing when Randy Quaid. The people of Vermont, okay. the judge, the lawyer, would understand our situation. We're in uh, I don't want to get too. Involved. I don't really know. Discussing I guess case, maybe he uh, uh, he had to go to court. I that's for sure. Let people know that we are innocent of all of the charges in Santa Barbara. <laughs> this does not end it, and we're still going to have to deal with the California situation. Right, exactly. We plan to. Do it. Yeah. We plan to do it. Not as a fugitive from justice. I think maybe he stayed. I think maybe they stayed in some expensive hotels for a long time and never paid the bills. <laughs> That's what they're accused of. How soon will you go back to California and get it resolved? You say you want to get it resolved. I'm taking the lead on my attorney's advice in that regard, and uh, he's working on it right now, and uh, he's advised me not to uh, speak about it. What if California files new paperwork, though? Well, we'll see. You know, if a judge finds what if a sky falls? Cost, what if know? a sky falls? Well, so what if a warrant? judge does find a problem? Nice cost, lawyer. What if the sky falls? That they failed. It's sloppy. <laughs> good good lawyer like, move. That is. This offense never happened. And if they want to go ahead and try and file papers, we'll deal with that. Right now, he is not a fugitive from justice. He has been cleared here in the court and the probable cause on these issues. The court took it seriously, issued a fair decision, and these two people deserve the right to spend some time themselves. They've gone through health, and, and uh, it's, uh, we appreciate that you've got a job to do, but uh, the time has come to let them go in the way. Oh yeah. Oh, he must. They must have been incarcerated, or at least in jail, because they're wearing like like very simple shirts that look like jail clothes. Oh, they were in Vermont. <clears throat> back in 2015. Huh. That has been another moment, with Randy Quaid. But I'm glad 
I could share with all of you. This has been a wonderful episode of Steve Me Alone. Herb, do you have any final thoughts for us? Actually, yeah. Can I have a, a, a big complaint or something, some injustice that was brought upon me yes. earlier today? Please complain. Um, I ordered food for lunch from a website, and the prices that were on the website were different from the restaurant, so they overcharged me. Really? Yeah. Was so? Was it like a third-party website? Was it like a foodler, one of these things, and and that was no. inaccurate, or no? It was oh, uh, the website for the actual for restaurant. The actual restaurant, dude. That's kind of that seems kind of lame. Yeah. Did you did you call them and say, hey, uh, your prices are all wrong on your website? No, I called and I told them what I wanted, and when yeah. it was time to pay the bill, it was a lot more. So did you just let it go, or did you uh, did you say did you go after him about it? No, I I, I ate my lunch with contempt. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> you probably, I mean, I bet they would have, uh, well, I don't know, it depend on the restaurant. They might have given you a discount, but I could see the point in just being like, ah, whatever, I'm not going to make this a big deal, you know. Because I guess it shouldn't be a big deal. But then again, you know, if you're planning to pay a certain then amount again, for exactly, a meal, yeah, it dude. it cost that exactly, much, dude. it's kind of a pain in the ass to pay more, you know. So, We're not uh, all made of money. Yeah. Restaurant. Awful, huh? Do you want to call out the restaurant on air? No, do you want not to deal yet. with this? I'm gonna, I'm gonna build own. a case against them. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I would either call them and ask them for like a gift certificate, or painstakingly build a case against them over the next six months until you can completely take them down and destroy their restaurant altogether. Well, everybody, this has been a really nice, really nice episode of uh, Steve Me Alone, and. Uh, I think it's time for uh, me and Herb to move along and hit the trail and uh, walk on down that lonely highway and wander off into the night. And uh, we'll see all of you next week. Same Steve Me Alone place, same Steve Me Alone time, except probably an hour later, maybe. But if you're listening on YouTube, none of that matters, and that's probably where most people listen anyway. But uh, we're going to go ahead and ride this out with uh, a little bit of a soundscape, a little bit of music, maybe a little Carpenter Brute, maybe uh, a little bit of the Mountain Goats, and uh, maybe a little bit of uh, Klaus Kinski as Fitzgeraldo and uh, Werner Herzog's Fitzgeraldo playing a Caruso opera record. So thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We will see you all on the other side.